I'll clear this and we'll introduce you to this thing, this surface. This is uh, the media mat from Tonic and what it is, it is a tempered glass mat, okay? So it's a very durable glass. The printing is actually underneath it, so you don't have to worry about what material you use on that. The printing is not gonna wear off, come off. If you use solvents, if you use a razor blade, nothing is ever going to scrape off because it's printed underneath it. But underneath the board is also uh, really important because this board has little feet on there. I hope there was nothing written like, hi Tim, hi everyone, because <laughs> I should have checked that before I started, but now I know we're good. Yeah, Simon, we're don't good. write any notes tomorrow. <laughs> Because it'd be like, hi, yeah, you're a winner. Um, but I put these little feet on there and I had them attach these for a reason because as a crafter, as a maker, I've always had the challenge for every single creative year of my life and that is maintaining my workspace. I don't care how big my craft table is, when I start making, everything seems to come right back in and I can start with a three foot workspace and end up working in six inches of space because all of my product creeps in. I'm like, if we could just raise this up just a little bit, it's gonna create this barrier that whatever I put on the outside, I don't know how it does it, but it finds its way back. And here, it's going to stop it. It gives you this surface. And what this surface is designed to do is really be your workspace and your messy space, okay? So this side has a removable craft mat, a craft mat that is silicone on the back, okay? So it keeps it from sliding around. It is a completely non-stick surface. You can clean it with hot water, with solvents, put it in the dishwasher, whatever you wanna do but I use it because it makes cleaning this off really easy, okay? If I get dried glue or paint or texture paste or anything, I can easily clean this off, I can peel this off, and I can go in the sink and wash it. But what it reveals is this part of the media mat. Now, the media mat is designed with a black surface. I just like this surface. I find it much easier on the eyes to see uh, what it is I'm working on. But this space that is exposed becomes a palette. And I know that so many people like to color, they like to watercolor, they like to do all sorts of things. And I always wanted a space that if I'm working, and I like to work mostly with my inks or with a lot of liquids, maybe I don't have an ink palette, but I know that I'm going to have markers or I'm going to have ink pads. I'm going to have all those mediums that I know how to watercolor with them, right? I know that I want to get the use out of them. So I also wanted to create a space that was user-friendly for what we had. And so the whole point of this is that I can go in with my cube inks, any one by one ink, and I can press it right onto the glass and make a palette and I can see the color because by printing in white, it actually works almost like a light box. It's not illuminated. It looks like it's illuminated. It's not plugged in, but that white and that space under there gives it that dimension where all of my colors just illuminate right on the surface. And so I can take my ink pads. That's why I did this little spot. So it works for creative convenience of these little cues, but let's face it in our ink world, these are trendy, right? Everyone's doing this. And even if you're working with solvent inks, it's still glass. So if you wanted to color with your archival inks or anything like that, you can still work on the glass. Now, a lot of other mediums work on this glass too. Maybe we have markers, like a distress marker. I can scribble this on. And a marker works so different on glass than it does on a nonstick surface, right? Take a look what a marker does on a nonstick surface, okay? So that is why I like to color on glass, because you think, well, hello, it's nonstick. Why wouldn't you just smear your ink on this? Because my ink is going to beat up on this and it's going to stay solid on this. And your medium never dries on the glass. So if I'm going to color, I would set up my palette and then I would just go and color all of my cards, right? Because now I'm ready to color. I've got my workspace set up to color. Maybe you're going to color with Distress Crayons. Another cool medium to color with. A lot of people think with a Distress Crayon, all you want to do with the crayon is open it out of the package. No, I'm just going to rip my package open. There you go. When I work with the crayons, a lot of times I can take this and I can scribble this on the glass as well. And I can pick up that color because that color is just going to become completely dissolvable with water. So let's take a tool, let's take a water brush, and just show you how this kind of works. Taking a water brush or a paint brush with water, doesn't matter, whatever you have, First, I'm going to prime it. So I'm gonna squeeze it, make sure water drips out and I'm ready to go. And I like that even though it's a clear glass, you can still see the water on there. I don't know if your camera's gonna pick it up, but you can see when there's a wet medium on your mat. And I know this is my wet zone, right? The splash zone. So I don't have to work in my own mess anymore. That was the other thing about working on that space. If I was doing all my inking here, my paper always went back in my mess or I had to clean up before I can put my paper down. Now I can go in, pick up my color, going in watercolor right from that, right? If I want to create my own colors, I still have that whole mixing area down here 
that I can go in and just play around and mix my own custom colors. So this becomes that media tool. If I want to go in and pick up my marker, right? My marker is going to allow me to watercolor and I get really rich color because so much of that marker was transferred onto the glass, right? If you ever watercolored with marker, there's not much that goes on this, right? When you pick up this color because you've watered it down, you don't have nearly the intensity you did when you picked it up off glass. There is a method to the madness. There really is. Crayon. This, we can really get this nice and wet. So then we go in and we have much more of that pigment, that intense pigment. So any of your mediums that you work with, you can use on the media mat, acrylic paint, any of that. Now, when we work with this, one thing that I found is that when I'm done coloring, I don't just stick this over the top. You can, but then you're going to need to eventually clean it right? Because it's, if you have too much ink on there, it's not going to cling. And this was designed to have a silicone backing that wherever you put it, for whatever reason, it's not going to move on your glass mat. If you do any die cutting, like if you have the sidekick, great place for that, right? It's going to suction onto that. So this just becomes your workspace. Now, cleaning. Super simple to go in and clean it with water. Just wipe that up. This, same thing. I can go and clean this up with water because these are water-based mediums. Now, let's say you had a solvent medium or something a little bit more permanent, okay? Maybe you're using an acrylic paint or alcohol ink or something like that. Alcohol inks or solvents are great over this whole mat. Alcohol inks are not good on this, okay? If you ever use alcohol ink and it says it on the package, not that we read it, but it says it a couple places, um, do not use alcohol ink on this particular mat because it is a fabric. The alcohol ink will actually permeate the weave of it and it will stain it doesn't mean that it's not functional, it's just going to mean a whole lot of ugly that will never go away, all right? Every other medium, acrylic paint, even solvent inks, they are going to be just fine on this mat, but if it's a fluid alcohol ink that can actually go in and soak, you're going to stain the mat. You may be okay with that. I have to say, I've learned to embrace it, because as much as I know not to do it, guess who just forgot it was there? That'd be me. So just so you know that's going to happen. But what I'm doing is I'm per putting permanent ink on both of these surfaces because now we're not dealing with something that is magically cleaned with water, right? We have a solvent ink, right? Something that doesn't necessarily want to come off. So my favorite thing to clean this with is hand sanitizer, okay? Hand sanitizer, most people have. If not, you should. Shame on you. Hello, people, okay? Did you get there's an epidemic here with all this flu? All right. The reason I use this is because you can see it goes on as a blob, like gel. If you use an alcohol wipe, which you can, it tends to dry as soon as you go to use it, right? So this is going to allow me to really clean this off. And what I found with sanitizer that's crazy is it cleans off anything dried. This could have been collage medium, decoupage, paint that is dry and crusty that you go in and try to take it off. You put a drop of hand sanitizer and it is gone. It dissolves right through it. But We've also designed some tools because, well, if you're like me, you may be a bit of a messy crafter. Just a bit. I love the fact that this goes right over the top of that. And there's my space. Yeah, nice that I've got my wet and dry. But we've created uh, some tools as well. Now, these are just prototypes, so just we're going to have to do a little pretend game for this one. But I'll talk a little bit about it. These are the media tools, and what these include are a media scraper. Now, the scraper, you may think, okay, uh, I've got a plastic scraper, great. This isn't, this actually has glass in it, okay? It has some glass particles because we wanted a scraper that would not break down, not a scraper that would need replaced. This doesn't dull, this doesn't dent, okay? It's, this is a totally different kind of plastic and this is designed to scrape the craft mat. So when I get dried glue or paint and I need to scrape it, I can scrape it. It's not designed to scrape this. It won't do any damage to it, but it's gonna make a horrible sound. It's gonna think like nails on a chalkboard. Yeah. So don't think, oh, I'm gonna scratch this up. You won't, you can cut on this. You can use your craft knife, your rotary tools, all of that right on this glass mat. But this is to kind of get those gunkety bits off. And what's nice is that it's got that cush grip that Tonic's known for, that little ridge right here for my finger. So it's really comfortable to actually grip that tool and go in and scrape things off. I like to use it also for burnishing. I found that even though I have a remnant rub tool with ideology, instead of holding that little tool, I'm like, good game on sucker. This rub on's going on my card like quick. So you'll see that this little thing is really convenient to just have there and it's a great tool. What is sold with this, because it's sold in a set, is called the Media Edge. And the edge has no markings. It is not a ruler. It is not for measuring, okay? We've already put that here. 
okay? What's on the base of your media mat is a lot of different measurement marks. And we did some interesting things because we wanted to think how would you craft, how would you make? Well, first off, you know that if you are going to scrapbook, if you have a 12 by 12 paper, this entire surface right here is going to measure 12 by 14. So I can put my scrapbook page down and still have that margin right and left. These all have different measurements. So for example, the bottom is gonna go zero to 14. So if I needed to actually measure something, if I put a piece of cardstock down and I placed it down, every box is an inch, okay? Cause I'm really not a good measure. I'm not gonna pay attention to 130 seconds, 1 16th, not that smart, but I can count boxes and go, oh, this card is one, two, three, okay. So you can place this wherever you want. This is going to give you your measurement going across. On this side from zero, it's going to give your measurement going up. These guys on this side, we wanted something for centering. Because maybe we're doing a layout, maybe we're doing a card, and we want to make sure that that thing is right in the center. So if I place my paper down and I look at my zero, I just need to make sure that my markings, my lines, match up. So here I've got my three and that little line. So I know that when I put my card on the mat and I can put it anywhere I want in that row, I know that right there at zero is center, okay? If I put it in the middle of my mat, and then we're gonna really get fancy, there's also my center. So I've got zero and zero and I've got dead center. If you're a scrapbooker, same thing. You can place this down and you can know, oh, I wanna put this out like two inches from the center of my page. Well, you'll already know because we've got those centering marks to follow. This edge design has this extra little lip that is actually attached, it's screwed on to this edge and that allows it to hang off of the mat. So by hanging off of the mat, now I have my straight edge, right? So if I'm going to place this down, I can put it down on my card, place this off the edge, and now I know that I have a straight line. So if I wanted to stamp my words, if I'm gonna do foam stamps, if I'm going to do anything that I want, I know that I've got a straight edge. Or same thing, maybe you're just putting photos onto even a journal page. You can open up your art journal and lay it on because your space is big enough, and you can hang this off the edge, and I know that I'm gonna be able to make sure things aren't crooked. Now it's got two sides to this edge. The first side is a tapered edge, okay? And this tapered edge is designed that if I go to use a pen or a marker or something like that, let's make sure this thing even works, okay? I can go along and that's gonna allow my pen to go right up against that edge. So a pen or a pencil because it's tapered. Otherwise, if it was just that thick acrylic, we would have that kind of gap right there. So that's why we've tapered it. So any markings that you wanna do, you're gonna use the tapered side. This is where we enter the world of pretend. The other side will have a metal rod embedded into this edge, and that is for cutting, okay? We designed it on this side on purpose because we don't want someone cutting from over here because you're gonna cut right into your wonderful mat, okay? That's why it's too short. It's designed that you're going to place it this way. So we're able to put our hand and we're going to cut. Now I know a lot of people are like, what about left-handed people? It's like, well, that could be phase two. That's up to tonic, not me. But yeah. I can tell you that this is designed that it goes up from the edge there will be that metal rod and I can take my knife and cut on that. So whether I'm doing a straight edge or a cutting edge, I've got that edge to do it. Now from a scrapbook realm, when I put this here, it's always going to cover my 12 by 12 paper. That's also important. So we wanted something long enough that once you put down a 12 by 12, or if you're working on a journaling page, you'd have that ability to always cover your page with the edge. So those are just some of the really cool and kind of simple features of the mat. There's a lot of other things that I do with this mat, but baby steps, I don't want to share it all because people are like, there's it, just too many things. It, to me, it does everything that you need it to do because if I'm doing all of my gluing, I have the ability to take my ephemera now, put my ephemera here, take my collage medium, be real sloppy, and then glue it onto my project and not work in my own goo. And I don't worry about cleaning this. People go, oh, do I need to clean it every time? No, because your option is either scrape it off when it's dry, or when you're done, peel it off and go wash it. But now you've got that workspace. And I mean, what I was telling everyone is, doesn't matter what kind of craft we do. You're a card maker, a scrapbooker, a painter, a mixed media, polymer clay is awesome on this because it is glass. Everybody needs a space to work in. And to me, this has created that space that whether you work on your kitchen table, whether you have a craft room, whatever that space is, when you go to a crop or a class, you bring this and this is your space. And I said, everybody that creates is going to need a media mat. You need it. It's not like, oh, I'm going to put this over here to do my work. It's like, no, this is my workspace. And, and I'll be honest, I mean, from using a craft sheet for a bazillion years and not necessarily having that space, it got a little weird remembering like going over here. But let's talk about blending. When you blend on this, the blending is totally different. 
And I think this might help a lot of people that are blend challenged, I really will. Um, because the glass blends the ink completely different than this. This you'll see that when I, when I blend, you can see how much medium goes on here because this is fabric, right? So this creates a drag. Okay, so believe it or not, when you're kind of that circular motion, that linen is kind of holding that tool and that's where a lot of people sometimes get weird little marks. If you learn to blend on the glass, it's like a giant slip and slide, right? We're getting a lot more ink, a lot more play, there is no drag and it makes blending so much easier because I'm able to get a lot more ink onto that surface than I did where I left it here. So that's a whole nother weird thing to train yourself. You're like, ooh, I'm inking. I better go to my non. No, I, then go back here. So it's kind of finding that place. So you have to remember to clean that off, right? Only if you wet it. So the ink is on there, but it's not going to come off unless I decide that I want to wet it, and then I can take it off. So as far as working in your own mess, it's not going to get all over your hands the way this will. Glass. It's a game changer, I'm telling you. It's, it's a space. Yeah, everyone's just like, can I, I need to take one home. I need it, I need it, I need it.